The acrid stench of gunpowder still clung to Samantha Ray's hair as she slipped through the shadows of the abandoned warehouse. Heart hammering against her ribs, she pressed her back to the graffitied brick wall, the chill seeping through her leather jacket, a stark contrast to the sweat beating her brow. Six years. That's how long she'd been chasing this moment. This chance for vengeance, for closure. For the justice denied when a dirty cop had gunned down her father in cold blood, leaving his body to cool on the unforgiving pavement. The syndicate had made that cop untouchable, cloaking his guilt in layers of bribery and coercion. But Samantha had persevered, clawing her way up the ranks of the FBI, honing her skills until she was a weapon forged in the fire of her own grief. A weapon aimed straight at the heart of the very organization that had shattered her world. Creeping to the edge of the wall, she peered around the corner, her Glock 19 a reassuring weight in her hand. The cavernous space was empty, save for a few rusted oil drums and the skeletons of long-defunct machinery. Moonlight filtered through grimy skylights, casting an eerie silver glow. The text had been maddeningly vague, luring her here with a promise as tantalizing as it was cryptic. Justice for your father. Come alone. Tell no one. Every instinct screamed trap, but Samantha had spent too long chasing ghosts to ignore even a whisper of a lead, especially one that mentioned her father. Wary steps carried her deeper into the warehouse, senses thrumming with tension. The hair on the nape of her neck prickled a heartbeat before a voice shattered the heavy silence. I must admit, I thought curiosity would draw you here long before now. Whirling, Samantha brought her gun to bear on the tall figure emerging from the shadows. Tailored suit, inky black hair, eyes in electric blue that seemed to pierce straight through to her very marrow. She knew that face. She'd memorized every angle, every plane, poring over the syndicate's files. Roman DeMarco. Dot. Heir apparent to the criminal empire she'd sworn to bring crumbling down. Seems I underestimated your restraint, he continued sauntering closer with a panther's lethal grace. He appeared unconcerned by the muzzle trained on his chest, a ghost of a smirk playing at the corners of his lips. Or, perhaps your dedication to the rules. Enough games, DeMarco, Samantha snarled, finger caressing the trigger. You have one minute to tell me what you know about my father before I paint this floor with your brains. He chuckled, the sound sending an unwelcome shiver down her spine. So fierce. Agent Ray. But, we both know if you were going to shoot me, you'd have done it already. Another step, the distance between them dwindling to a mere arm's length. Besides, if I die, the truth about your father dies with me. Samantha's heart stuttered. This close, she could see the inky fans of his lashes, the five o'clock shadow darkening the blade of his jaw. Could catch the scent of his cologne, cedar and smoke and sin. What truth? She managed, ashamed of the slight tremor in her voice. Roman's head canted, gaze lingering on her mouth a beat too long before flicking back to her eyes. The same truth that brought you to me. That compels you to walk the knife's edge between the law you serve and the revenge you crave. He leaned in, breath ghosting over the shell of her ear. Your father was one of us, Samantha. And his murder was only the beginning. A gasp tore from her throat, the revelation striking with the force of a bullet. Staggering back a step, she shook her head mutely, gun lowering as if suddenly too heavy to hold aloft. No, she whispered, cold certainty warring with a traitorous flicker of doubt. You're lying. I have many sins, but deceit isn't one of them. Regret flickered in the depths of Roman's eyes. Your father made the syndicate what it is today. His death was no accident, but the opening salvo in a war decades in the making. His hand rose slowly, fingers brushing her cheek with a gentleness that stole her breath. And you, my fierce Samantha, are the key to winning it. Before she could react, before she could even draw breath to form a question, the screech of tires cleaving the night silenced her tongue. Roman tensed, the softness vanishing from his face as his hand dropped to the holster at his side. They found us. Cobalt eyes lanced to hers, urgent and commanding. Go, I you. Now.
Now, if you want the truth, if you want to avenge your father, then live. Run, and don't look back. Samantha hesitated, torn between the compulsion to flee and the bone-deep need to unravel the mystery crashing down around her. But in the next heartbeat, the choice was ripped from her hands. The warehouse doors exploded inward, the concussive blast throwing her to the ground in a hail of splintered wood and twisted metal. Ears ringing, lungs choking on dust and debris, she rolled onto her stomach, scrabbling for her dropped weapon. Chaos erupted, a maelstrom of gunfire and shouting. Boots pounded the concrete, closing in. Samantha lurched to her feet, reeling, searching desperately for a glimpse of raven hair, electric blue eyes. But Roman was gone. And in his place, a horde of armed men bearing down, the cruel twist of their scowls declaring their intent. No time to think, only to act. Snatching up her gun, Samantha fled into the labyrinthine bowels of the warehouse, Roman's parting command echoing in her skull. Live. Run. Dottie Don't look back. But even as she plunged deeper into the darkness, the acrid sting of betrayal seared her throat. Roman knew. Tow. He held the key to unlocking the mystery that had haunted her for six long years. And one way or another, she would pry it from his hands, even if she had to bleed the truth from his lying lips. The staccato click of Samantha's heels echoed through the marbled halls of the FBI's New York field office, a harsh counterpoint to the dull roar of her thoughts. Three days. That's how long it had been since the ambush at the warehouse. Since Roman DeMarco had blown her world apart with a truth she still couldn't bring herself to believe. Her father, an agent of the very syndicate she'd sworn to dismantle. It defied everything she knew, every cherished memory of the man who'd raised her, loved her, shaped her into the woman she was. The man whose blood still stained the hands of those she hunted. But, even as her mind rebelled, some treacherous part of her whispered that it explained so much. The long absences, the furtive phone calls, the secrets that hung like a shadow over their final days together. Had she ever truly known him at all? Jaw clenched. Samantha shouldered through the door to her cramped office, the space little more than a glorified closet overflowing with files and empty coffee cups. She'd barely slept since that night, poring over every scrap of information she could find on her father's case, on Roman himself. But the syndicate's secrets were well guarded, and her clearance only extended so far. If she wanted answers, she'd have to dig deeper, even if it meant skirting the very laws she'd sworn to uphold. A sharp rap at the door jolted her from her ruminations. Schooling her features into a mask of cool professionalism, she turned to face the intruder. Director Morrison. She inclined her head in greeting, hoping her exhaustion didn't show. What can I do for you? Ethan Morrison was a bulldog of a man, all broad shoulders and square jaw, with shrewd eyes that seemed to strip away every pretense. He'd been a legend back in his field days, the agent who'd single-handedly brought down the Genovese crime family. Now he ran the organized crime unit with an iron fist and a nose for half-truths. Ray Dadumman, we need to talk. He closed the door with a decisive click, perching on the edge of her paper-strewn desk. I just got off the phone with NYPD. They found a body down by the docks. Male, mid-thirties, two shots to the chest. His gaze drilled into hers. It's Roman DeMarco. The world tilted, a roaring filling Samantha's ears. Roman? Dead? It couldn't be. Not now when he held the key to her father's past. To her future. Swallowing hard, she forced her voice steady. Any leads on the shooter? Morrison's eyes narrowed. That's the thing. Witnesses reported a woman fleeing the scene. A woman with red hair. He leaned closer, voice dropping to a growl. A woman matching your description. Icy fingers walked up Samantha's spine. You think I did this? It wasn't a question. Off the record? No. No. I know you better than that. He scrubbed a hand over his stubbled jaw, something like pity softening his gruff features. But my hands are tied, Ray. I, eh, got wind of your little unauthorized jaunt to the warehouse. 
And now this? The optics aren't good. The unspoken hung heavy between them. Suspension. Inquiry. Disgrace. Everything she'd worked for, sacrificed for, teetered on a razor's edge, and all she could think was that her one chance at the truth was slipping through her fingers like so much blood-stained sand. Twenty-four hours, Morrison said abruptly, straightening. At her furrowed brow, he fixed her with a meaningful look. That's how long I can stall the hounds. After that, this comes down on both our heads. Samantha's heart kicked against her ribs, a dizzying mix of gratitude and trepidation. Why are you doing this? A ghost of a smile flickered across his stern mouth. Because you're too damn good an agent to go down for something you didn't do. And because I knew your father. The man deserves justice, even if some would rather his secrets stay buried. He turned for the door, pausing with his hand on the knob. One day, Ray, make it count. Find out what really happened to DeMarco. And watch your back. The syndicate plays for keeps. Then he was gone, leaving Samantha alone with the shards of her fractured reality. Roman, murdered. Herself, the prime suspect. And the clock ticking down on her last shot, at the truth. She closed her eyes, the memory of electric blue searing against her lids. His final words to her, an echoing taunt. Run, and don't look back. But she was done running. Done letting the syndicate dictate her fate, her future. They wanted a war? She'd give them one. And she'd start by finding out who put two bullets in Roman DeMarco's chest and stole her vengeance out from under her. Even if it meant descending into the very heart of the underworld itself. Eyes snapping open, Samantha snatched up her jacket and gun. She had a murder to solve, a conspiracy to unravel, and a debt to settle. In blood and bullets and secrets dragged screaming into the light. One way or another, the game ended here. The only question was whether she'd be the one left standing when the final shot was fired. Jaw set, she strode from the office, Morrison's warning ringing in her ears. One day, 24 hours, she'd make every damn second count. The alley was a narrow slash of shadow, the air thick with the stench of rotting garbage and stale urine. Samantha wrinkled her nose, pressing deeper into the gloom, the rough brick scraping her back through the thin leather of her jacket. She ditched her car three blocks over, the risk of being tracked too high. The syndicate had eyes everywhere, and she couldn't afford to lead them back to the one lead she had left. Nico Caruso. The name had popped in her father's old case. Files. A footnote, buried in a sea of redacted lines. A low-level runner with ties to the DeMarco family. If anyone could point her in the direction of Roman's killer, it would be him. Provided, of course, he didn't put a bullet between her eyes first. A scuff of shoe on pavement had her hand flying to her holster, body coiling tight as a spring. A shadow detached from the wall, resolving into the wiry frame of a man in a stained hoodie, face obscured by the fall of greasy hair. You Caruso? Her words were clipped, taut with the tension thrumming through her veins. The man shifted, the glow of a cigarette cherry flaring in the dark. Depends who's asking. In a single fluid motion, Samantha had her gun trained on the center of his chest. Federal agent. Dot. So, let's cut the crap. You knew Roman DeMarco. I want to know who killed him. A rasp of laughter, devoid of humor. Lady, you've got balls, I'll give you that. But you're barking up the wrong tree. DeMarco was a ghost. No one got close enough to off him. Except the woman who shot him at the docks last night. Samantha's aim never wavered. Red hair, green eyes. Ring any bells? The pause was fractional, but she caught it all the same. The hitch in his breath the flutter of his pulse at the base of his throat. He knew something. Never seen her. The lie was smothered in bravado. And even if I had, I ain't in the habit of snitching. Hazardous to my health, you feel me? Samantha's finger caressed the trigger. More hazardous than pissing off a fed with nothing left to lose? Nico shifted his weight, the movement telegraphing his intent a heartbeat before he spun on his heel, vaulting for the mouth of the alley. Samantha was faster. 
Two long strides had her slamming him face first into the wall, gun jammed against the base of his skull. Wrong answer, she hissed, knee digging into the small of his back. Let's try again. The woman. Who is she? The grunt was half pain, half frustration. You don't get it. This is so much bigger than you, bigger than me. You go down this road, there ain't no coming back. Samantha leaned in, until her lips brushed the shell of his ear. I'm counting on it. For a heartbeat, the only sound was their mingled breathing, harsh in the confined space. Then, slowly, Nico raised his empty hands. The wolf. Yeah, yeah, 39. You didn't hear it from me. A microscopic easing in the tension of her shoulders. It wasn't much, but it was a start. She stepped back letting Nico slump against the bricks. The muzzle of her gun never left his temple. If this is a setup, just go. His voice was ragged, defeated. Before I change my mind and put us both in the ground. He didn't have to tell her twice. Samantha was already moving, melting back into the shadows as if she'd never been. The drive to the waterfront was a blur, her mind racing ahead to what awaited her at the pier. A trap, almost certainly. The real question was whether it was one she'd walk out of. But what choice did she have? The image of Roman's face surfaced unbidden, electric eyes boring into hers with unnerving intensity. The secrets he'd taken to his grave festered like a wound, poisoning her from the inside out. She had to know, had to understand the truth of her father's life. Of her own even if it damned her. The pier was deserted, a lonely stretch of weathered wood jutting into the inky waters of the Hudson. Samantha killed the engine, hands tightening on the wheel as she scanned the abandoned docks. Derelict warehouses hulked in the gloom, rusted chains swaying in the salt-tanged breeze. The perfect place for an ambush. Stealing herself, she slid from the car, the reassuring weight of her glock at the small of her back. The boards creaked underfoot as she moved toward the largest of the buildings, senses straining for any sign of movement in the darkness. Ten paces from the doors, a woman's voice rang out, stopping Samantha cold. You're as predictable as he said you'd be. A figure stepped from the shadows, silhouetted in the pale glow of the moon. Tall, slender, a tumble of dark hair obscuring her features. But Samantha didn't need to see her face to know she'd found her quarry. Who are you? The demand was low, lethal. Why did you kill Roman DeMarco? A laugh, silvery and mocking. Oh, Samantha. So many questions. But then, you always did need to know the answers, didn't you? The woman stepped closer, and Samantha's heart seized in her chest. No, two. It couldn't be. Hello, sister. The barrel of a gun glinted in Natalie's hand, trained unerringly on Samantha's heart. It's been a long time. A rushing filled Samantha's ears, the world tilting on its axis. Her sister, the golden child, the prodigal daughter, standing over her with murder in her eyes and a serpent smile. Natalie. The name was little more than a breath, a prayer and a curse tangled on her tongue. What have you do done? The smile sharpened a blade honed on secrets and lies. What I had to. To protect? What's mine? What's ours? She cocked her head, gaze trailing over Samantha like a physical touch. Roman told you, didn't he? About dad? About the life he led. The life we were born to? Samantha shook her head mutely, denials lodging in her throat. It was too much. Her father, a criminal. Her sister, a killer the very foundations of her world crumbling to dust beneath her feet. Natalie clucked her tongue, a parody of sympathy. Poor little Samantha, always the last to know. The perfect daughter, the shining star. If only you knew how much Dad despised your righteousness, your blind faith in the system that was content to let our mother's killer walk free. A cold hand squeezed Samantha's lungs, the air turning to glass in her chest. What are you talking about? The man who shot mom, who tore our family apart. He was FBI, Samantha. One of your precious brothers in blue dyed all. 
Natalie's voice dripped venom, eyes bright with an unholy fervor. They closed ranks, buried the evidence. Let him retire to some sunny beach while we buried our mother in the cold, hard ground. Samantha flinched as if struck, the words a blow more devastating than any fist. It couldn't be true. The FBI was her life, her calling. They wouldn't. They couldn't. But even as the denials formed, the insidious whisper of doubt crept in, corroding the foundations of her beliefs. If her father could live a double life, if her sister could walk the path of vengeance, what other secrets had been buried? What other lies had she been fed? Natalie watched the emotions play over her face, a slow, cruel smile curving her lips. You see it now, don't you? The rot at the heart of it all. The corruption that led our mother's murderer walk free. That took our father from us in all the ways that mattered. She took another step, the gun unwavering in her grasp. Roman tried to tell you, tried to open your eyes to the truth. But you couldn't see past your precious principles, your misguided loyalty to the badge. Samantha's fingers twitched toward her weapon, even as her mind reeled. So... You killed him. Your own family. I did what was necessary for the family, for the syndicate. Roman was weak like Dad, content to lurk in the shadows, to play a rigged game. But me? Natalie's grin was a slash of white in the darkness, feral and fierce. I'm going to burn it all down, starting with the FBI that failed us. And you? You're going to help me. The world narrowed to the barrel of the gun, to the abyss yawning at Samantha's feet, to the choice that would damn her either way. Her sister, the last remnant of a family shattered by secrets and lies. The FBI, the institution she'd built her life upon, now crumbling beneath the weight of its own corruption. And at the center of it all, the truth. The terrible, inescapable truth, poised to swallow her whole. In that suspended moment, Samantha felt the threads of her life unraveling, the fabric of her identity shredding beneath the onslaught of revelations. Cop, criminal, loyalty, betrayal. The lines blurred and bled, until she couldn't tell where one ended and the other began. She closed her eyes, the faces of the dead swimming behind her lids. Her father, her mother. Roman, with his electric gaze and whispered promises. And in the darkness, a decision crystallized. A path lay bare in blood and broken oaths. Her eyes snapped open, locking with Natalie's across the expanse of shadows and shattered trust. All right, she whispered, the words heavy on her tongue. I'm in. Where do we start? The safe house was a nondescript brownstone on the outskirts of the city indistinguishable from its neighbors, save for the heavily reinforced doors, and the subtle gleam of cameras nestled in the eaves. Samantha followed Natalie inside, the weight of her decision settling like a leaden cloak across her shoulders. Betrayal. It tasted like ash on her tongue, bitter and cloying. The FBI had been her North Star, the guiding light in a world cast in shades of gray. And now... Now she was adrift, cut loose from the moorings of her convictions by the tides of treachery and deceit. But what choice did she have? The institution she'd sworn her life to had failed her. Failed her mother, left unavenged. Failed her father, driven to the shadows. And now, it would fail her too if she let it. No, don't. She was done being the good little soldier, marching to the beat of a corrupt drum. Done sacrificing her soul on the altar of a false ideal. If the system was broken, if the rot ran as deep as Natalie claimed, then it was time to burn it down and salt the earth in its wake. Even if it meant becoming the very thing she'd hunted. You're doing the right thing, you know. Natalie's voice cut through the tumult of her thoughts, low and assured. The only thing. The FBI? The cops? They're all part of the same machine. The same rigged game. And the only way to win is not to play, Samantha finished, the words leaden on her tongue. She turned to face her sister, jaw tight, but tearing it all down. Natalie, 
The cost is worth it. Natalie's eyes flashed bright with conviction. Think about it, Sam. A world without the corruption, the hypocrisy. A world where justice isn't bought and sold to the highest bidder. Where the strong don't prey on the weak with impunity. She stepped closer, hand coming to rest on Samantha's shoulder. A touch that once would have been a comfort, now heavy with the weight of all that lay between them. We can build that world, you and I, brick by brick, bullet by bullet. All you have to do is let go. Let go. Let go of the oaths, the beliefs that had defined her. Let go of the woman she'd been, the life she'd built on the shifting sands of a crumbling foundation. It should have been harder. Should have rent and torn, bled her dry in a severing. But looking into Natalie's eyes, seeing the fire of purpose, of shared pain, Samantha felt something loosen in her chest. A knot of tension, of doubt, unraveling in the face of her sister's certainty. Okay, she breathed. The word a release. A surrender. Okay, what? Tell me what comes next. Natalie's smile was a slow, unfurling, pleased and predatory. We start at the top. The agent who buried Mom's case, who let her killer walk. He's the key to unraveling it all. She turned, striding to a bank of monitors set against the far wall. A few taps at the keyboard, and a face filled the screens. A man, late fifties, salt and pepper hair, and a neatly trimmed goatee. Unremarkable, save for the eyes. Flat and cold, like a shark's. Special Agent Daniel Holbrook, Natalie spat, the name a curse. Rising star of the Bureau, tapped ahead the New York field office. But before that, he worked organized crime. And before that, he was the lead on Mom's case, Samantha finished, the pieces clicking into sickening place. Her stomach turned, bile rising in the back of her throat. He buried it. Buried her and rose through the ranks on the blood of his sins, Natalie snarled. Lauded, rewarded, while our family paid the price, while Dad turned to the only justice he could find. She whirled back to Samantha, eyes alight with a manic fervor. It's time for a reckoning, sister mine. Time for Daniel Holbrook to pay his pound of flesh. Samantha swallowed hard, the enormity of it pressing down like a weight on her chest. To go after a sitting FBI agent, a man of power influence? It was suicide. It was madness. It was the only way. What do you need me to do? The question was steady, resolve crystallizing in the pit of her stomach. Natalie's grin was a slash of white in the dimness. I need you to be the good little agent one last time. Get close to Holbrook, earn his trust. Find out where he keeps his secrets, the evidence of his sins. And when the time is right, she trailed off, the implication hanging heavy in the air between them. Samantha closed her eyes, the faces of the lost flickering behind her lids. Her mother, her father. Roman, with his haunted eyes and whispered truths. All the lives shattered, the futures stolen by one man's greed, one organization's corruption. No more. No more would she be a pawn in their games a cog in their bloody machine. No more would she bow to the lies, the false idols of justice and honor. She was Samantha Ray, daughter, sister, avenger, and she would have her pound of flesh, even if she had to carve it from their still beating hearts. Her eyes snapped open, locking with Natalie's. In their depths, a matching fire burned, bright and deadly. I'm ready, she said simply. A vow, an oath sealed in blood and betrayal. Let's burn it down. Wanley. The New York field office was a bustling hive, agents and analysts scurrying through the halls with the focused intensity of worker bees. Samantha moved among them, a ghost in their midst, the mask of dutiful agent firmly in place. But beneath the surface, a cold fury simmered, held in check by the barest threat of control. The same fury she saw reflected in Natalie's eyes, in the set of her jaw as they planned and plotted, preparing for this moment. The moment of reckoning, of retribution, long overdue. 
She reached the door of Daniel Holbrook's office, the nameplate gleaming with a dull gold sheen. The man who'd shattered her world, who'd set her on this path of blood and vengeance, lay just beyond. Oblivious, arrogant in his power, in his belief that his sins would remain forever buried. But the dead were restless, their secrets clawing at the crumbling foundations of his house of cards. And Samantha. Samantha would be the spark that set it all ablaze. Drawing in a steady breath, she raised her hand, rapping once on the polished wood. Come in. The voice was deep, shot through with the easy authority of a man long accustomed to power, to holding the fates of others in his hands. Stealing herself, Samantha turned the knob, stepping into the lion's den. Holbrook looked up from his desk, brows furrowing at the sight of her. Agent Ray. I don't believe we had an appointment. We didn't, Samantha said evenly, letting the door fall shut behind her. But I thought it was time we talked. About my mother? She watched the color drain from his face, the first cracks appearing in the facade of unassailable control. Your mother? I'm afraid it I don't. Don't. The word cracked like a whip, sharp and biting. Don't lie to me, not here. Not now. You know exactly who she was. Who I am. Holbrook's mouth snapped shut, eyes going flat and hard. Tread carefully, Agent Ray. You're in dangerous territory. No more dangerous than the ground you walk every day. Samantha stepped closer, perching on the edge of his desk. A deliberate invasion, a challenge thrown down at his feet. Tell me, how do you live with it? The blood on your hands? The lives you've ruined? The justice you've denied? Justice? Holbrook scoffed, a vein pulsing in his temple. Is that what you call this little crusade of yours? This misguided quest for vengeance? He leaned back in his chair, a king on his throne of lies. Your mother's death was a tragedy, Samantha. But it was just that. A tragedy. Unsolved, yes, but not for lack of trying. I'll not have you sully the good name of the Bureau with your baseless accusations. Fury ignited in Samantha's chest, white-hot and searing. Baseless? Like the evidence that went missing from her file? Like the witnesses that recanted, one by one? Like the surveillance photos that put a known hitman at the scene? A man with ties to the very criminals she was investigating. Holbrook's eyes narrowed, a flicker of unease passing behind the mask of indignation. Careful, Agent Ray. You're treading on thin ice. The ice is already cracking, Holbrook. And you're going under. Samantha leaned in, voice dropping to a lethal whisper. I know what you did. I know about the bribes, the cover-ups. I know how you silenced anyone who got too close to the truth. Including my father. Your father was a criminal, Holbrook spat, composure slipping. A low-life thug who got what he deserved. My father was a man broken by grief, by the knowledge that his wife's murder would go unavenged. The words tore from Samantha's throat, jagged-edged and bleeding. He turned to the syndicate because he had nowhere else to go, no one else to turn to for the justice denied him by the very system he once believed in. She was shaking now, tears of rage pricking at the corners of her eyes. A system you perverted, a trust you betrayed. And for what? Money? Power? Was my mother's life worth so little to you? Holbrook surged to his feet, slamming his palms against the desk. You have no idea what you're talking about, little girl. No idea of the forces you're meddling with. The sacrifices that must be made, the compromises struck to keep the wheels turning, to maintain the greater good. The greater good? Samantha laughed, sharp and mocking. Is that what you call it? The web of corruption that lets men like you thrive, that leaves the innocent to bleed while the guilty prosper? She shook her head, a terrible calm settling over her. No. No more. It ends now, Holbrook. Dot I? It ends with you. In a single swift motion, she drew her gun, leveling it at his head with unwavering aim. Holbrook went still, eyes widening in sudden understanding.
you won't get away with this. The Bureau, the Syndicate, they'll hunt you to the ends of the earth. Let them come. Samantha's finger caressed the trigger, a lover's touch. I've already lost everything that mattered. My mother, my father, my faith in the very ideals I once held sacred. She smiled, a blade's edge. The only thing I have left is revenge. And I'll see it through, even if it damns me. In that suspended moment, the world narrowed to the space between heartbeats. To the barrel of the gun, to the bead of sweat trickling down Holbrook's temple. To the choice, the final cut that would sever her from the woman she'd been, the agent who'd believed in the brightness of the badge. But, then, what was one more stain on an already tarnished soul? Jaw clenched, Samantha moved to pull the trigger, to send Daniel Holbrook to the hell he so richly deserved. And the office door burst open with a crash, a familiar voice ringing out in the sudden silence. FBI! Drop your weapon! Ethan Morrison stood in the doorway, gun drawn and leveled at Samantha's chest. His eyes were hard, unreadable, but there was a flicker of something there. Something like regret, like sorrow for the futures about to be lost. Don't do this, Ray, he said softly, a plea and a prayer. Don't let him win. Not like this. Samantha's hand trembled on the gun, the first waver in her conviction. Morrison, the man who'd been her mentor, her friend, the one person in the bureau she'd thought she could trust. And now, now he was here, standing between her and the vengeance she'd so long craved. Between her and the abyss yawning at her feet, hungry for her soul. You don't understand, she whispered, tears blurring her vision. I have to. For her. For him. For everyone they've destroyed. Not like this, Morrison repeated, taking a step closer. Not in cold blood, Samantha. That's not who you are. That's not the agent I trained, the woman I believe in. He holstered his gun, hands held out in supplication. You're better than this. Better than him. Don't let your grief, your anger, twist you into something you're not. Something you'll never come back from. Samantha's chest heaved, the gun wavering. Holbrook was ashen, frozen, the smug superiority wiped from his face by the specter of his own mortality. So easy. It would be so easy to pull the trigger, to watch the life drain from his eyes, to make him pay, in blood and suffering, for all he'd taken, all he'd destroyed. But, O'Neill, but Morrison was right. This, this wasn't her. Wasn't the daughter her mother had raised, the agent her father had believed in. The woman Roman had seen, even in the shadows of his own darkness. Slowly, painfully, she lowered the gun. Let it slip from fingers gone numb clattering to the floor at her feet. Holbrook is yours, she said dully, sudden exhaustion washing over her in a tidal wave. Do with him as you will. Then she turned, shoulders slumped, and walked past Morrison. Out of the office, out of the building, out of the life she'd once clung to with every fiber of her being. She had nothing left. No badge, no purpose, no North Star to guide her through the darkness. Nothing. But. The truth. The terrible, wonderful truth, bought and paid for in tears and blood. And maybe, no, maybe that could be enough. When, outside, the city waited. Bustling, humming, alive with a million stories, a million secrets waiting to be uncovered. Samantha Ray walked into its embrace, a ghost among the living. A woman reborn, torn down to her foundations, and built anew in the crucible of loss and betrayal. She had no destination, no plan. No ties to sever, no goodbyes to say. Only the open road, the endless horizon. And the promise of a future, waiting to be written in the ashes of the past. But then, in the crowd, a flash of black hair. Electric blue eyes, meeting hers across the sea of strangers. Roman, dot, dot. Alive, whole, smiling that crooked smile, holding out a hand in invitation. A choice, a chance, a new path, forged in the fire of all they'd endured. Hard in her throat, Samantha reached out. 
and took it. And together they vanished into the city's beating heart, leaving the ghosts behind. Ready at last to face the future. Come what may. The safe house was a different one this time, a small, nondescript apartment on the outskirts of the city. Samantha followed Roman inside, heart pounding a staccato beat against her ribs. Questions crowded her tongue, jostling for position, but she held them back, waited for him to speak, to explain the miracle of his presence, the impossibility of his survival. He turned to face her, shadows playing over the planes of his face in the dim light. For a long moment he simply looked at her, those electric eyes seeming to strip her bare, to see straight through to the battered, bleeding heart of her. You found her, he said at last, a statement rather than a question. Your sister. Samantha nodded, throat suddenly tight. I did. Well, I did. She... She told me everything, Roman. About my father, about the FBI. About what really happened to my mother. A muscle ticked in his jaw, a flash of old pain. I'm sorry, Samantha. I'm sorry you had to find out like this, had to carry this burden. Don't. She shook her head, stepping closer. Don't apologize. You tried to warn me, tried to open my eyes to the truth. I just... I wasn't ready to see it. Her hand rose, fingertips tracing the line of his cheek. Solid, warm, real. I thought I'd lost you, she whispered, voice cracking on the last word. I thought, when Natalie said she'd killed you. She tried, Roman said softly, covering her hand with his own. But she underestimated me. Underestimated the lengths I'd go to to protect what matters. He drew her closer, until their foreheads touched, breaths mingling in the scant space between them. To protect you, Samantha. Because you, you matter. More than the syndicate, more than the power more than any of it. Tears spilled down her cheeks, hot and stinging. Roman, I love you, he said fiercely. The words of vow, a covenant. I have from the moment you walked into my world, all fire and righteousness, determined to bring down the empire I'd built my life upon. A quiet laugh, edged with wonder. You changed everything, Samantha. Showed me that there was more, that I could be more, than the sum of my sins. That even a man like me, <laughs> one me, could be worthy of redemption, of love. Samantha surged forward, capturing his lips with her own. The kiss was desperate, hungry, a pouring of all the fear, the longing, the sheer, dizzying relief, into a single point of searing contact. Roman's arms came around her, crushing her to him as if he could absorb her into his very skin, make her a part of him down to the marrow of his bones. They clung to each other in the darkness, two shattered halves made whole, the jagged edges of their broken places fitting together like puzzle pieces. When at last they parted, breathless and trembling, Samantha rested her head against his chest, listening to the steady thrum of his heartbeat. Anchor and lullaby, tethering her to this moment, this truth that burned brighter than any of the lies that had come before. What happens now? She asked softly, fingers curling into the fabric of his shirt. Natalie, the FBI, the syndicate. They won't let this go. Won't let us go. Roman pressed a kiss to her hair, a benediction, and a promise. We fight, he said simply. We fight for the future we want, the life we choose. Together. He drew back, cupping her face in his hands. In his eyes, she saw the same resolve, the same unwavering purpose that had driven her for so long. But now, now, now it was tempered with something else, something warm and bright, fierce and unshakable. Love, in all its terrible, wondrous glory, I'm with you, Samantha. To the end of the line, whatever may come, I won't let them take you from me. Not again. She covered his hands with her own, squeezing tight. I'm with you too, Roman. Always. No matter what. And she meant it, down to her bones, her blood, her soul. They were bound now, not by the chains of their pasts, but by the unbreakable ties of choice, of love, 
of shared purpose. Come hell or high water, they would face it together. And woe betide any who stood in their way. Win, and ya. Uh, the call came three days later, a terse summons from a blocked number. Samantha and Roman exchanged a glance, a thousand words passing unspoken between them, before she answered. Hello? Samantha? Dot. Natalie's voice, cold and clipped. We need to talk. I'm listening. Not over the phone. Meet me at the old cannery on the south side docks. Come alone, or not at all. The line went dead, leaving Samantha staring at the phone, a curl of unease unfurling in her gut. Roman's hand on her shoulder, steady and grounding. It's a trap, he said grimly. It has to be. I know. Samantha blew out a breath, squaring her shoulders. But she's my sister, Roman Putt. And she has the answers we need, the key to unraveling this whole tangled web. She turned to face him, resolute. I have to go. Have to see this through, one way or another. For a long moment, he searched her face, jaw tight. Then, slowly, he nodded. Okay, one. But alone, not alone. Never alone, not anymore. Relief, bright and sharp. Together? Together. A vow? A covenant, sealed with a fierce, searing kiss. We. Oui. The cannery loomed out of the fog, a hulking behemoth of rusted metal and shattered glass. Samantha picked her way across the debris-strewn parking lot, roaming a silent shadow at her back. Every sense was on high alert, nerves thrumming with tension, anticipation. The door creaked open under her touch, spilling them into cavernous darkness. The air was thick with the stench of brine and decay, cloying in the back of her throat. Natalie? Her voice echoed in the gloom, bouncing off the graffitied walls. I'm here. Show yourself. Silence, heavy and oppressive. Then... I told you to come alone. Natalie's voice, cold and mocking, seeming to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. A click and harsh fluorescent light flooded the space, blinding after the darkness. Samantha threw up a hand, squinting against the sudden glare. Natalie stood in the center of the room. A gun leveled steadily at Samantha's chest. At her feet? No. The word tore from Samantha's throat, a strangled moan of denial. Daniel Holbrook lay sprawled on the concrete, eyes open and glassy in death. Blood pooled beneath him, black and sticky, painting macabre patterns on the grimy floor. I warned him, Natalie said tonelessly. Warned him what would happen if he tried to run, to slither out of the pit we'd dug for him. She smiled, sharp and feral. But then I suppose he always was a slow learner. Samantha's head spun, nausea churning in her gut. This? This wasn't what she'd wanted. What she'd planned. Justice? Yes, but not like this. Not cold blooded execution. Not murder in the dark. Beside her, Roman tensed, hand hovering over the gun at his hip. Natalie, he said carefully, a negotiator's calm. This isn't the way. This isn't what we fought for, what we bled for. Speak for yourself, Natalie spat. You've gone soft, Roman. Let yourself be led by the heart, by sentiment, by her. The gun swung to Samantha. Accusation and condemnation. She's corrupted you. Made you weak? Made you forget who you are, what you were meant to be? No. Roman's voice was steady, implacable. She made me remember. Remember the man I wanted to be, before the syndicate. Before the blood and the lies and the darkness. He stepped forward, shielding Samantha with his body. I won't let you hurt her, Natalie. Won't let you destroy the one bright thing in this hellscape we've built. Natalie's eyes narrowed finger tightening on the trigger. Then you'll die with her, brother mine. Pity. Mwon. You had such potential. Time slowed, stretched like taffy. Samantha saw it all in sickening detail. The flex of Natalie's finger, the muzzle flash, the blossom of red, spreading across Roman's chest as he staggered back, crumpling to the ground. A scream, 
torn from the depths of her soul. No! She lunged for him, cradling his head in her lap as she pressed desperate hands to the wound, trying to staunch the hot flow of his life's blood. Roman, stay with me. Please, please, don't leave me. Ah, Agnia. His hand rose, trembling to brush the tears from her cheek. Shh, love. It's all right. It's going to be all right. Natalie's shadow fell over them, the gun steady in her hand. How touching. A final goodbye, before I send you both to hell where you belong. Why? Samantha whispered, anguish and incomprehension. Why, Natalie? We're family, we're blood, we... We are nothing. Natalie snarled, a wave of fury and madness distorting her features. You stopped being my family the moment you chose him, chose them over me. She gestured wildly with the gun, encompassing the fallen agent, the syndicate, the whole sordid tapestry of their shared past. I did this for us, for the life we were meant to have. The power, the control, the empire denied to us by their rules, their laws, their precious fucking morality. She laughed, high and wild, teetering on the knife's edge of sanity. But it doesn't matter now. None of it matters. Because I'm going to burn it all down, Samantha. The FBI, the syndicate, the whole rotten edifice. And I'm going to build something new from the ashes. She smiled, beatific and terrifying. And you? You'll just be one more thread to cut. One more loose end to tie up. A footnote. A casualty in the glorious rise of the Queen of the Underworld. Samantha stared up at her, at this stranger wearing her sister's face. At the madness, the megalomania, the twisted wreckage of love and loyalty. You're insane, she breathed, wonder and horror. You've lost your mind, Natalie. Lost your soul to this, this poison. No, no. Natalie's voice was calm now, eerily serene. I found my purpose, dear sister. My calling and I won't let you or him or anyone else stand in my way. She raised the gun again, aiming point-blank at Samantha's heart. Goodbye, Samantha. I'd say I'm sorry. But we both know I'd be lying. Samantha closed her eyes, a strange peace settling over her. This was it, then. The end of the road, the final curtain call. She'd fought so hard, come so far. Only to die here in this place of blood and shadows, at the hands of the one person she'd thought would always stand beside her. But, but, she wasn't afraid. She'd made her choices, her stands. Loved and lost and lived on her own terms. And if this was to be her end, at least she wouldn't face it alone. Roman's hand found hers, fingers twining, holding on to the last. Together, even now, even at the end of all things. She waited for the gunshot, for the burst of pain, and then the slow fade into darkness. Waited for it all to be over, one way or another. But it never came. Instead, a voice rang out, sharp and commanding. FBI. Drop your weapon! Samantha's eyes flew open, disbelieving. There, framed in the doorway, stood Ethan Morrison, gun leveled squarely at Natalie's chest. A host of agents fanned out behind him, Weapons drawn, faces grim. It's over, Natalie, Morrison said coldly. The gig's up. We know everything. The bribes, the murders, the whole sordid affair. You're done. For a moment, Natalie just stared, shock and fury warring on her face. Then, slowly, she began to laugh. A broken, jagged sound, edged with hysteria. You think this changes anything? She hissed, gun never wavering from Samantha's heart. You think you can stop me? Stop this? I am the dark agent Morrison. I am the reckoning, the reaper, the fool. You are under arrest, Morrison said flatly. For murder, conspiracy, and a whole host of other crimes I don't have time to list. Now drop the gun and get on your knees. Natalie's face contorted, a mask of rage and madness. Never, she spat. I'll see you in hell first, all of you. I'll all you. Her finger tightened on the trigger, 
and Samantha tensed, bracing for the shot. But it was Natalie who jerked, who staggered, a bloom of red spreading across her chest. Morrison lowered his smoking gun, face set in lines of grim determination. I warned you, he said softly. It didn't have to end like this. Natalie crumpled, gun clattering from nerveless fingers. She hit the ground hard, a twisted mimicry of Holbrook's corpse. For a moment, there was silence, broken only by Samantha's ragged breathing and the distant wail of sirens. Then, Morrison was there, kneeling beside them, barking orders into his radio for medics, for backup. Samantha barely heard him, barely registered the chaos erupting around them. All her focus, all her being, was centered on Roman, on the shallow rise and fall of his chest, the flutter of his pulse beneath her desperate fingers. Stay with me, she whispered, a plea and a prayer. Don't you dare leave me now, Roman Asher. Not after everything, not like this. His eyes fluttered open, hazy with pain but still so blue, so achingly alive. Never, he rasped, blood on his lips. I'm with you, Samantha. To the end of the line, remember? She laughed through her tears, pressing her forehead to his. I remember. I love you. I love you so much, you stubborn, impossible man. And I love you, he breathed. My fierce, beautiful Samantha. My heart, my home, my everything. Then the medics were there, pushing her aside, working frantically to stabilize him, to keep him with her. Samantha let them, let Morrison lead her away, out into the cool, crisp air of the dawn. It was over. The nightmare, the long, dark night of secrets and lies and blood. Over at last, the truth dragged, kicking and screaming into the light. But the story, their story, that was just beginning. She tipped her head back, face to the rising sun. Let its warmth bathe her, soothe the jagged edges of her grief, her pain, her hard-won triumph. They had so far to go, so much still to heal, to resolve, to rebuild. But they would do it together hand in hand, heart to heart. A new day, a new chapter. A new life, forged in the crucible of all they'd endured, all they'd become. Samantha smiled, fierce and bright, full of hope and promise, full of love, wild and defiant and true. Come what may, they would face it. Together, always. Ready at last, to step into the light.